Hello, thanks for joining the maze this week. I am Rosemary Ukokotega. Topping today's chat, APC's consensus speakership candidate splits minority caucus members elect. The group which refers to self greater majority was forced into factions when members met separately within the week. Speaker Bajabia Miller speaks for the first time since 10th House Speakership Consensus candidate's announcement by ruling All Progressive Congress. What I have done is to spread the joy. They did Northwest. I advised them they did Southeast to spread the joy. It cut across. And in the Southeast, I found Ben Kalu. Senate transmits Constitution Alteration Bill No. 58 to President Buhari for assent. For all the details of today's package, stay tuned to ASO Television. We are live on DSTV Channel 392, Star Times TV Channel 127, Free TV Channel 547 on the UHF Band on Channel 38. Stay with us. We are a nation blessed with people of diverse cultures, religions, languages, and opinions. It is ironic that we are now being ripped apart by our greatest strength, our diversity. We have allowed intolerance, insensitivity, bigotry, and nepotism to blind our vision of the greatness we can achieve working together as one. We may not have the same culture, nor religion, nor language, but we all belong to the same nation by the divine will of God. We did not choose to be Nigerians. Nigeria chose us. This nation is our divine heritage, and if we open our eyes, we would realize that what divides us pales in comparison to what unites us. And by the comparison and conciliation of our differences, we will grow until our differences disappear. Our unity cannot be willed by mere declarations, nor do we get unity by ignoring the questions that beg for answers. We must celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our unity. Our strength is not in our numbers, but in our unity. Because even the weak become strong when united. Nigeria unite. This message is brought to you by Abuja Broadcasting Corporation, owners and operators of ASO Radio 93.5 FM Abuja, ASO Television, DSTV, Channel 392, Star Times Terrestrial, Channel 127, Free TV, Channel 507, People's TV, Channel 285, and UHF, Channel 38. You're watching The Maze on ASO Television. We go ahead. For some time now, politicking for leadership of the soon-to-be-inaugurated 10th Assembly took larger portion of proceedings at both Senate and the House. While much of the intrigues are noticed more among members at the House, less have been noticed among senators interested in the Senate presidency seat. From the House, the recent twist is the crack now being witnessed in the camp of the minority caucus for the incoming 10th Assembly. Precisely on Monday this week, a meeting of two factions of the caucus held simultaneously at separate locations in Abuja here. At one of the meetings, some members-elect endorsed APC's consensus candidates for the office of Speaker Mr. Tajuddin Abbas and Deputy Speaker Mr. Benjamin Kalu. The members who referred to themselves as Majority Caucus Forum at a meeting with around 68 members attending announced the endorsement via a motion moved by Mr. Tijani Abdukadir from Kano State and seconded by Mr. Pasca Agbodike from Anambara State. Along with Honorable Benjamin Kalu as Deputy Speaker, I so move. I hereby second the motion that Honorable Deputy Speaker of the 10th Assembly. I am Rebecca Benjamin Carlo, the Deputy Speaker of the 10th Assembly, has been supported 
by minority forum. I so second. The motion has been moved that the minority parties forum hereby adopt the rights of the candidate Thomas and the rights of the Benjamin Kanu as the speaker and deputy speaker designate for the third assembly of the House of Representatives of the Government of Nigeria. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. Let's put our hands together. A communique containing grants for which the endorsements were reached and signed by all members of the forum was also read by the chairman, Mr. Iduma Ogarigwe, a PDP member from Ebony State, which is based on the need to provide effective and efficient opposition for the 10th House. Two, that we will separately and jointly work for the passage of laws and motions which will promote the prosperity and well-being of Nigerians and advance the civil liberties and benefits entrenched in the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Then, that the importance of our resolve to play a leading role in the formation of the leadership of the Third Assembly, and as a result of our diligent interactions with all aspirants for the position of Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, we hereby resolve to support the duo of the Right Honorable Candidate Abbas and Right Honorable Benjamin Carlo, respectively, as Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives. Four, that we have found in the two persons of Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Carlo a leadership that will allow for fairness, equity, as well as provide a equal platform for all political parties represented in Parliament to have a say in the running of the legislature and expression of alternative views on issues of public interest. Five, that in the next few days, we will be meeting in a larger caucus of the minority parties to discuss and formalize the adoption of the Speaker and Deputy Speaker designates of the 10th Assembly of the House of Representatives. Six, and finally, that we urge other members elect of the 10th Assembly of the House of Representatives to join in the election of Right Honorable Tajuddin Abbas and Benjamin Carlo as Speaker and Deputy Speaker of the 13th, uh, the 13th of June 2023. That's the proposed date of our inauguration. We thank you so very much. God bless you. Mr. Ogarigwe insisted at the end that the minority remains one. This is a forum, a forum of, of the minority caucus. That is what we have. And we are all one minority caucus of the 10th Assembly. In the next few days, hopefully between Wednesday and Thursday, we are all going to come together and have a larger meeting where every member of the minority caucus will be here for us to formalize the same we are doing here today. Oh, well, we will watch and see to see how the caucus remains one as the politics keep playing along. Meanwhile, the second faction led by a member from Bielsa State, Mr. Fred Agbedi, during sitting, though failed to announce any endorsement to disclosed withdrawal of interest in the race for speakership and deputy speakership of the 10th House of Representatives. Chairman of a previously constituted committee to scout for credible members for offices of speaker and deputy speaker, Mr. Nicholas Mutu, addressed the session through his representative, Mr. Afam Ogene. Mr. Ogene to the mic with the report of the committee stating no candidates expressed interest for the two principal offices during their sitting. I wish to report on behalf of the chairman of that committee and the entire members of the committee that as at the end of the period given to undertake that assignment, no member of the minority caucuses, better known as the greater majority, stepped forward for presiding the role of presiding officers. Deductively, that means that we are not bidding for those two positions. However, we remain united as one caucus of the opposition parties. Interesting, you may say. However, 
This development has become an obvious contradiction to an earlier resolve of the minority caucus to file candidates for the office of speaker and deputy speaker respectively. Again, we watch as the politics play on. We move on with more intrigues. Last week on the maze, we did inform you the current deputy speaker, Mr. Idris Wase, went ahead to declare his intention to filing the APC zoning. The lawmaker who represents Wase Federal Constituency of Plateau State under North Central recalled that since the return of democracy in 1999, the geopolitical zone has yet to produce the speaker and appealed to the power brokers to reconsider. Let's bring you a little excerpt from the ceremony where the lawmaker reeled out his agenda. Today, we face various doubting challenges that tax our vision, capacity, patriotic spirit, competence, and resort to control the challenges ahead of us in the most deliberate manner to achieve the success that we all need to build up in our people that the better Nigeria is possible and achievable. Indeed, the task before us is to overcome the tribulations that threaten our heritage of, our, of all hard work, enterprise, development in the country of Nigeria, leadership in Nigeria, and work, and a prime place in the world's affairs. We are all mindful of this challenge, and with the collective responsibility of all Nigerians, and the leadership in particular, we shall continue in our effort towards growing Nigeria to a prosperous nation by eliminating all threats on our part and ensuring that challenges that have been defeated so far are not in fact treating our decisions all over the nation. All, all, all over the nation. In leaving out the saying, one good turn deserves another, other speakership aspirants making up the G7 who are opposed to the APC's party's arrangement, Mr. Mukhtar Betara from Bonu State, Mr. Jaji from Zamfara State, Mr. Sada Soli Kastina State, Princess Miriam Monoha of Imo State, and Mr. Yusuf Gadi from Plateau State showed up in solidarity. Ladies and gentlemen, we are all here to support in solidarity with our fellow aspirant who by all standard can lead, provide a purposeful and inclusive leadership in the next 10 years. For us forming a group, we are not fighting for the we are all the FAC members. If we say we have picked a consensus candidate, a consensus candidate can be picked by us. If we see all of us, as parents, and we decided and said, this is the person who picked the people in the house. My prayer for us, among all of us, including my elder brother, the right honorable deputy speaker, may God Almighty see our heart and choose that who is the best for the people of Nigeria. Now, at nearly the same time of declaration of Wase's interest, the vice president-elect, Senator Kashim Shetima, met with APC's consensus candidates and the joint 10th House door at a different location where he provided reasons for the choice, warning the incoming legislature against any act capable of restraining relationship with the executive arm of government. Given the current circumstances we found ourselves in, the stability of the nation is much more important than all other considerations. The most incompetent, the most corrupt Southern Christian is better than the most puritanical and competent Northern Muslim to be the President of the Senate of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Absolutely. All other considerations have to be relegated to the background because we are talking of the stability of the nation. I met with Right Honorable Wase, the Deputy Speaker. He's someone who is pretty close to me. We'll continue the engagement so that we shall have a rank of free tense assembly. The nominated speaker, Mr. Abbas, and Deputy Speaker, Mr. Carlo, in separate remarks, appreciated the party, promising to ensure a united house. We are very grateful 
to you, to Mr. President-elect, and to the party for finding us worthy of this enormous of leadership. And I want to assure you that we will not disappoint the party, we will not disappoint you, we will discharge our responsibilities with our most efficiency. We decided to show that unifying the nation will inspire national loyalty from all corners of the nation. And you remember Southeast. And you said, granted, that before now, no Southeasterner was in the presiding officer's position in the last four years. But this time, irrespective of the number of votes that came from Southeast, the party considered cohesion and gave us this. We are grateful. The meeting was at the instance of the Joint Task Group of the 10th House, comprising members elect from all political parties for the incoming 10th Assembly. Still on the speakership race, a group of concerned Nigerians, Conference of Southern Bruno Development Associations, within the week, passed a vote of confidence on the member representing Bio Bio Shani and Kwaya Kusa Federal Constituency of Bruno State. Mr. Mukhtar Aliyu Batara for the office. Chairman of the Association's Ambassador Dauda Danladi at a news conference said a vote for Mr. Batara represents an improved legislature and a better Nigeria. Going by this sensitive position of responsibility he has held in the House, it is clear that Onu Batara has garnered the required experience to lead as Speaker of the House of Representatives for the 10th National Assembly. Petra is a stickler for good governance and pursuit of excellence in all his endeavors, a great adherent to the rule of law and due process, as well as believer in national and grassroots development. Honorable Petra Aliu, as Speaker, the House of Representatives will have the leadership it deserves, while the nation will be better off. On behalf of the Conference of Southern Borough Development Associations, and all well wishes wish to appeal to the APC top brass as well as members of the House of Representatives to put their trust in Honorable Betara by granting him the chance to lead the House of Representatives as Speaker of the 10th National Assembly. The man Betara is one of the seven group of aspirants who believe one of them is a better choice than the consensus candidates of the ruling All Progressive Congress APC for the office of the Speaker, 10th House of Representatives. We go now to the high point of all politicking within the week at the Green Chamber. In what could be best described as first appearance since the leadership tussle for the incoming 10th Assembly began, the number one member of the outgoing 9th House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bojabia Mila, at a meeting of members elect, christened the Joint Task House, spoke on APC's choice of Mr. Tajuddin Abbas and Mr. Benjamin Kalu as Speaker and Deputy Speaker, 10th House of Representatives. He said his support for the duo is born out of desire to build on legislative gains so far recorded by his administration. That I decided to support the person that is least closest to me of everybody that is running. Because I saw in him a man with tremendous capacity. I'm very big on capacity. Very, very big. As I inquired with the, from the speaker of Kenya what, one time when we were talking, and he said to me, where did you find this? How long um, has uh, Tajuddin been in parliament? I told him. He said, because each time his members come home, they keep talking about him. He won on his own the election. He became the treasurer of uh, the African uh, parliament. My point is, he quietly makes his impact, very quietly. When I found out that he had uh, drafted and sponsored 78 bills in this session, I was, what kind of human being is this? Mm -hmm. Who does that? To draft and sponsor one bill can take a year, can take two years of thorough research, but to do 78 when you're not a bill factory. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But not only do you sponsor 78 bills, you actually have 21 of them passed into law. Perhaps in another year, many of you who are new will find out the rigors, the passion, the commitment, the legwork, the reaching across the aisles that you have to do to even pass one bill, let alone 21. So I found in Tajuddin somebody I felt we could be proud of as members of the House of Representatives. That is not to say that others don't have capacity. But there's capacity and there's capacity. Honorable colleagues, I only have one thing to say to you. I only, have one, I only ask you for one thing. Many of you know me and many of you don't because you're new. But I suggest and I ask that you talk to those who know me, who I have served, my members that I have served for four years. I want you to trust me. I want you to trust my judgment. Even if it's a, a leap of faith, I want you to take that leap of faith. Trust my judgment in this one, on this one. For somebody who loves the institution, I can never lead you astray. My style of leadership is different. I don't micromanage. As long as my members are happy, I'm happy. Even at my own expense. And I have found those same traits in TJ Abbas. I said to the people who zoned, why Northwest? And they said to me, go and read your political history. That from the day Nigeria was born, the Northwest being the largest voting bloc with seven states, has never, ever been outside the top four hierarchy in Nigeria. And the merger of APCs between the Southwest and the Northwest, why would it be my time, or our time, that Northwest will be left out of the calculation? And that's why the Zone 2, amongst many other reasons. What I have done is to spread the joy. They did Northwest. I advised them, they did Southeast to spread the joy, cut across. And in Southeast, I found Ben Kalu. Nobody, nobody <laughs> who has been a close observer of the proceedings of the House in the last four years can say, in all honesty and in good conscience, that Ben Carlo does not have the capacity to be the Deputy Speaker of the House. The Speaker, while going down memory lane to the politics of the Speakership of the House in 2011, said he regretted supporting one of his predecessors and outgoing Governor of Sokoto State, Amino Tambua, to emerge the then Speaker. And I've been the pioneer, the leader of what they call the House Project at one time, when Tambua was the speaker and when we installed Tambua. I regret it. The incoming speaker will tell you more about the travails and the problems we went through for four years. When we did that the first time and when we did that the second time. And I want you to hold that in stark comparison to what the last four years has been. Now, when you take, when you look at those two sessions and the last one that we're just rounding up, you have the benefit of being able to compare and then you take a decision, an informed decision. Not once somebody tells you and says, oh, no, 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 no. The dependence of the, of the legislature cannot be compromised. That's hogwash. Nobody is compromising the independence of the legislature. Nobody. The least person that would do that is me. But because you're, the fact that your party says this is where we're going, it doesn't mean that you're compromising the independence of the legislature. Even in the most advanced democracies, we just saw, just saw 
The United States elect their speaker about three, perhaps maybe four months ago. The Republican Party, the majority party, and the members, they all went one way. Who were they listening to? Who gave them the direction? An ex-president. An ex-president, Donald Trump. Not even the sitting president, because he's a Democrat. And that's an advanced democracy. So I want us to wear our thinking caps. Many of us are new here. People will talk to you. People will cajole you. They'll say all flowery, all sorts of things in flowery language and romantic language. But at the end of the day, we have to be mindful of one thing. The party we represent has its leaders. The governors from the states, whether we like it or not, they're very powerful. You can do your own bidding, your own personal bidding today. Now, the preferred speakership candidate, Mr. Abbas, used the opportunity to remind his naysayers that he would emerge victorious amidst current rebellions. One way for you to know whether a man is going to be good enough for you or not is not by what he tells you. No one will come campaigning and he will inflict damage on himself. Nobody. Everyone will try to paint himself in the best way possible so that he would be appealing to you, so that you can vote for him. But one way that you can be able to know whether that man deserves your vote is for you to do your checking. Who is this man? What are his antecedents? From there, you'll be able to know whether he is the right person to lead you. Some of the examples Mr. Speaker gave are the kind of testimonies that I expect you to go and verify from other contestants. Thank God, each and every contestant is a chairman of a committee. To so start from there. That chairman must have deputies working under him. Go and interrogate those people. How is this man? From there, you'll be able to know whether that man is reliable or not. If you can't find the chairman, there is hardly a committee in this house that does not have up to 30 members. Look for the members. Find out what kind of leadership that person has given them in that committee. From there, you can make your assessments as to whether that man is trustworthy, he's dependable, he's reliable, he can be able to lead you in trust. Please, gentlemen, do your searching. Look at me, look at the others, and see if there is a way you can be able to convince yourself that those are better than me in your own set criteria. I'm praying God should give us the wisdom to separate the good from the bad, to be able to do what is just a right for all of us. The meeting for the day took a rather interesting turn when one of the G7 aspirants, who previously opposed the choice of Abbas and Carlo, House Leader Mr. Adodogowa, and two orders stood down their speakership aspirations for the zoning decision of the party. Politics. The meeting of the aspirants with some opposition members was at the instance of the Joint Task 10th Assembly, group of members elect from across the eight political parties that won seats for the incoming House. Time now to what has been on the floor of the Red Chamber. A contestant for the 10th National Assembly Senate Presidency, Senator elect Abdulaziz Yari, within the week committed to the unity and peaceful coexistence of Nigeria if elected as Senate President. Senator Yari at the dinner organized in honor of 109 senators by the Director General Almagamated Campaign Groups of Nigeria, Dr. Kailani Mohammed, said he would work closely with the Executive for Nigeria's oneness. Unity and setting agenda for 20 for 10 Senate. Um, I really appreciate the decision of this organization for combustion support for me 
to become the tenth president of the Senate. Um, let me say here that Nigeria is a wonderful country with wonderful people. We believe in one Nigeria and we believe in unity of Nigeria. Each and every one of us, 109 senators, before being elected as senator, you are in one commitment or the other and you attain a level of life. And we believe strongly all of us we are committed to work in harmony for the betterment of Nigeria and by God's grace we are going to work hand in hand, not in tandem with the executive for oneness. This is our program and we believe all of you, you will give us support to achieve this for a better Nigeria. I thank you so much. The Director General Amalgamated Campaign Groups of Nigeria, Dr. Mohammed, organizer of the DINA, said Nigeria's unity is non-negotiable. Nigerians can be united anytime, despite our diversity. But one thing we achieved today, the senators, they have given enough overwhelming support and we believe by the grace of Allah on the 13th of June 2023 Alaji Dr. Abdulaziz Yari will emerge the Senate President of this country inshallah why did I say so? past military leaders, both north-south, our political juggernaut in the north, the Arewa Consultative Forum, the youth leaders led by Nastura, the lawyers of the north, they are going to call you on World Press Conference tomorrow. All now, the North is now one. They have formed a formidable force that the Senate President must come to the North. To, to the north. Our correspondent at the Red Chamber reports theme of the event was unity and reconciliation. Well, a senator elect under the platform of the NPP representing Kanu South Suleiman Kawu has advised the President elect Senator Bola Ahmed Tinibu and the ruling party to practice the separation of powers of the legislature as enshrined in the constitution. The senator-elect was briefing newsmen on the zoning formula of the party APC in Abuja. Constitution as our guidance. Let us sit down. Allow us to do the needful. Allow us to, to do all those things that will promote unity, happiness and prosperity of Nigeria. I am advising our Baba, the president-elect, that he is a democrat and we learn a lot from him. He is in forefront in fighting Upasanjo for this democracy. We are with him when he leads us to stop Jonathan in the installing the leadership of the National Assembly. Baba, don't allow psychophant. Don't allow so-called new cavals in Nigeria to dictate you. We will not allow it and we will resist it. Some of your son are still in the National Assembly. We knew you are very consistent in terms of democracy. You are very consistent on the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We learn a lot from you and we assure you we will go with your teaching. We learn a lot. I insist that we learn a lot. We will not allow this one to happen when we are in the National Assembly. It is a game of number and we are doing our best to 
uh, teach them another lesson. Away from the politics to other proceedings. At the Red Chamber, the Senate within the week directed the clerk to the National Assembly to transmit a constitutional alteration bill number 58 to President Muhammad Buhari for assent in line with the provisions of the Authentication Act. The bill seeks to provide for independent candidacy in presidential, governorship, national and state assemblies and local government councils elections. The clerk was also directed to transmit to the president Constitution Amendment Bill No. 46, which seeks to include the presiding officers of the National Assembly in the membership of the National Security Council. The two proposals were part of the constitutional alteration bills transmitted to state houses of assembly for concurrence last year. However, not part of the 35 that secured the required approval of 24 out of the 36 states' assemblies. Deputy Senate President Ovie Omoagege, who is also chairman of the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on Constitution Review, in a motion during plenary, informed his colleagues that the Gombe State House of Assembly has approved the Constitution Alteration Bill No. 46 and 58 and forwarded its resolution to the National Assembly. Mr. President, distinguished colleagues, the third order of the day is a motion standing in the name of Senator Obi Omo Agege Augustine, the Deputy Senate President on the passage of Constitution Fifth Alteration Bill, numbers 46, membership of the National Security Council to include presiding officers of the National Assembly and the 58th Independent Candidacy. Mr. President, you may wish to invite the Senator Obi Omo Agege Augustine to move the motion. The Senate Senator Obi Omo Agege, the Deputy President of the Senate. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise as the Chairman of the Committee on Constitutional Review on behalf of all members of the committee listed here in the other paper to move this motion on the passage of the Constitution Fifth Alteration Bill Number 46, membership of the National Security Council to include presiding officers of the National Assembly, and Bill Number 58, Independent Candidacy 2023. Mr. President, the Senate recalled that on Tuesday, the second day of May 2023, the clerk to the National Assembly was directed to transmit Constitution Alteration Bill No. 20, which is the Uniform Retirement Age for Judicial Officers, after it met the requirement of Section 9, Section 2 of the Constitution to Mr. President for his accent. Also recall, Mr. President, that Gombe State House of Assembly was among the State Houses of Assembly that were here to forward their resolution. Others are Jigawa, Kebi, Kwara, Plateau, and Taraba State Houses of Assembly. I aware, Mr. President, that Gombe State House of Assembly has now forwarded its resolution, convinced that with the approval of the Gombe State House of Assembly, the Constitution Fifth Alteration Bill Numbers 46, membership of the National Security Council to include presiding officers of the National Assembly 2023, and Bill Number 58, Independent Candidacy 2023, have now met the provisions of Section 9, Section 2 of the Constitution for passage. Accordingly, Mr. President, the Senate resolves that the Senate do direct the clerk to the National Assembly to transmit the bills, both bills, to Mr. President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federation for his accent in line with the provisions of the Acts Authentication Act. I so move, Mr. President. The Senate, after adopting the motion, directed the clerk to the National Assembly to transmit the bills to the President for assent. So I, I want to commend the committee uh, on constitutional review, particularly the chairman and the man who wanted to usurp my presiding powers and members of the committee for working so hard in the first instance and then the State House of Assembly uh, for agreeing with us. Uh, with this, I will put the question, those in favor of the only prayer, and the only prayer is direct the clerk to the National Assembly to transmit the bills, and there are two bills, to Mr. President 
commander in chief of the Armed Forces of the Foundation for his assent in line with the provisions of the Act Authentication Act. Those in favor of this prayer say aye. aye. Those against say nay, the ayes have. And I also want to mention here that this is um, another legacy that Mr. President and the 9th National Assembly uh, can leave behind. And I imagine that the Mr. President will have no difficulty assenting to these two bills because they are very straightforward. The Parliament had earlier transmitted 35 constitutional alteration bills to the President for assent, out of which 19 were rejected and 16 signed into law. And that's it on the maze for the week. Many thanks for watching. See you next week. I am Rosemary Kokotega. Bye-bye.